John McTone's Law Number 15. Character won't determine your destiny. It will determine your ultimate destiny. How about that? So here we go. This is Rich and Michael with Mainline Executive Coaching, ACT. ACT Act. You've heard it before. ACT Act. This is what leaders do. You must do it. As a, as a leader, you've got to act in all sorts of ways. One of the ways we don't always think about, but is really important, is that of accountability. Effective leaders are highly accountable in terms of holding others accountable. They're not afraid to do that. They can put it out there. They expect it. They want the responses. In terms of the people that are sea level, they want that as well. Now, the real, the real genuine leaders, what they also do is they allow everyone else to hold them accountable, sea level, mid-level, throughout the whole thing, partners that they have, people that they have, associations of business, you know, all their vendors, they are accountable. And this is one of the great things about leaders. Leaders with character have accountability. And that's what we want to be aware of. And that's what we're going to be talking about today, Doug, on it. Accountability and character yeah. we're going to be doing. So, John, we've got a great, a great and wonderful guest here today, John Hope. John, why don't you just give us your I'm going to I'm going to open it up for a little bit for you because you, you've got a very impressive background. Just give us your story here, John. Well, I want to thank you both, uh, Michael and Rich, for inviting me on. It's it's an honor and a privilege. Uh, I'll just give you 30 seconds. So um, West Point Academy graduate, uh, 35 years of, uh, of a combination of active and reserve duty. So I've been in kind of a leadership laboratory uh, my entire career. I also have uh, corporate experience in business. Uh, I was once upon a time an investment broker and started a small business. So I think I bring both the, the leadership from the military perspective and from the civilian perspective uh, into our little marketplace here. That's outstanding. You, you, got, you, got, you have something you want to share with us and it's about um, younger entrepreneurs having a lot of experience, a lot of experience that you have Tell us about your take on young entrepreneurs and the things that you're doing with the young entrepreneurs. Well, I, th I thank you for asking. It's, it's a big part of what we do here in Nashville. So my wife, Christy, and I, Christy's also a master certified coach. So we bring uh, a husband and wife team. And when we moved to Nashville just about a year ago, we, we quickly understood we don't have a large circle of influence. So what we're trying to do is a lot of hunting and gathering and, and outreach. So we are members of the Nashville Entrepreneurial Center, and we joined up as both um, coaches and advisors. So we do a two-day leadership workshop, Michael, and these uh, anywhere from 12 to 25 people, typically they're younger entrepreneurs. We just did uh, another one this week, Wednesday and Thursday. And when we start out, we asked uh, in a trustful way, hey, raise your hand if you've had any kind of formal leadership training. The 12 attendees that we had this past week didn't have any, nobody raised their hand. So it's a wonderful opportunity for us. We do this pro bono because it's, it's just giving back to the community. It's to help them understand that leadership, either in a one person company, a three or four person company, it is what it is, but it's going to evolve. And we're there to help them kind of put training wheels on their leadership experience, and they've got a safe place and two advisors to kind of help them along as guides. That's impressive. That's very inspiring, John. Thank you. I appreciate you telling, telling us. Thank you. All right. Rich, I think you got a question here for John. Let's let's take it up here. You know, first off, John, I, I want to tell you, thank you so much for your service. Uh, you know, I, I was raised in a, a family where Army was a big deal. My father was retired Army. Uh, he was buried with full military honors about two years ago. One of his one of his, his last requests too was the last few days that he didn't go anywhere without his army hat. He was in his in his bed with his army hat and the whole nine yards. And I just want to tell you, thank you so much for your service. How much that means. You're welcome. God bless you. Thank um, you. Well, you know what, John, you selected Law 15, and I, I got to tell you, in your in your role as leader in various roles that you filled, and especially probably in your military career, character has to be something that is absolutely imperative. You've got to have absolute trust, loyalty, everything that comes with character. Um, how does that? How does it, that affect your ultimate destiny? You know, that's what it, it. 
it talks about in John Matone's law, but can, can you unpack that a little bit for us? Yes, I, I would be glad to. So um, I, I absolutely believe in the John Matone method, and I absolutely believe in the credibility of this particular quote or this particular law, if you will. Um, so character is everything for a leader. And, and without character, you're really not a leader at all. So I was very fortunate enough to be brought up in, in a very close family. Uh, my mom and dad, um, absolutely great parents. Um, I have five sisters. They raised us all um, to very, very high standards. But also faith was a part of my growing up as well. So very active in, in the church and so on. And so, of course, from that spiritual realm, you, you kind of get what character is all about, what, what you should be. Uh, and as John Matone says, what, what you must be. And then in my uh, in my later formative years, after I graduated from high school, um, I was at the University of Minnesota for two years, but then I went to West Point. And day one at West Point, you are introduced to the honor code. A cadet will not lie, cheat, or steal, or tolerate those that do. And that really is kind of the essence of character. And you're measured on that every day. So it it's in academics. Um, it's in your relationship with others. You know, you can leave a hundred dollar bill on your desk and walk away uh, and come back and expect to find it there. Now you get in trouble for that because it's supposed to be secured in your lockbox, but the principle, you know, is, is the same. And the eye opening part was the non-toleration clause. So at West Point, if you observed or caught somebody lying or chilling or stealing, you're obligated to report that situation. So it really provides overview and overwatch over the entire team. Now, the next thing um, comes out of the cadet prayer. It's just really a, a one sentence, but it says simply, um, uh, help me to accept, I'm getting, I'm, getting, I'm getting the quote wrong and I'm sorry. Um, it, it says, help us to choose the harder right instead of the easier wrong and never be content with the half a truth when the whole can be won. So I think if you're looking for just a bottom line, very short snippet, if you followed the honor code in that one line out of the cadet prayer, you basically have a very firm foundation of character and character is legal, moral, and ethical. And, you know, again, in the profession, it, it lays the foundation for duty, honor, and country and, and for service to the nation. That's that's I really like that. That is just good stuff there, there, John. John, John I've got a good question for you. You've led a lot of men and women throughout your career, and I'd like to hear your feedback, your reflection on regarding this law number 15 and the people that have led you and how that's affected them, and then in turn, the people that you have led and how that law has affected them. Well, I have been the recipient of some absolutely fabulous leaders over my career. Um, I would guess maybe substantially in the military, but other other in, in the civilian world as well. And so um, when you think about your ultimate destiny, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Steve McCovey and uh, the seven habits of highly successful people and simply begin with the end in mind. And John McTone clarifies that. He says, you know, what is your legacy? What do you want your legacy to be? And if you want your legacy to be something sustaining and powerful and memorable and historical, um, I think that's where you need to start to look. And then you backward plan through your entire life. Um, okay, you're going to have a legacy at the end of your career, military or business. You're going to have a legacy at the end of your life. And my opinion is if you're not legal, moral and ethical, I mean, that's going to come out. And it's going to come out fairly soon. And so it can either be a catastrophic failure um, in, the, in the case of, for example, lately there's been an, a, another cheating scandal at West Point, right? And I'm ashamed to kind of say that because we should know better. But um, those who were found guilty are expelled. They're gone. That, that is the only recourse for a lack of ethics. And so that's a spectacular failure. But then as you go on in life, Every day you're being measured and you're expected to be legal, moral, and ethical. And when you cut corners and, and, and when you overlook your indifference to the standards or the policies or the procedures, it's going to be the death of a thousand cuts, Michael. You know, people are going to see that 
if you don't show up every day with with your best game and 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 that that impeccable character and ethics beyond reproach it it's not going to get you to the destination that you really want to be and it's your ultimate destiny how do you want to end up in life um do you want to be known as someone who cheated on an exam at west point and carry that with you the, the entire life or do you want to just kind of get along in corporate america or wherever knowing people that are avoiding you because you don't enforce the standards because you don't demonstrate the standards and one way or another over a short period of time or a long period of time i believe that you're in charge of your destiny but your legacy should probably your guiding principle no, no matter how far out that's going to be that's why that's very why so one of the things that people don't often realize is, yeah, there's the evidence that you talked about. Here's the evidence. The people are really pretty smart and pretty intuitive about a lot of stuff. You know, you bring your character with you. There's no doubt about that. If we're, I don't know why this is so. Most people can pick it up when there's something amiss. They may not know why exactly, but there's just something that's just not there. That's not working the way it should be. And, and that creates that aura, whatever that is, that's so... Uh, you it really it is one of those evidences of you know you become what you've done as well let me check with this uh rich you've done a, a lot of uh, leadership and in, in in business and how do you see this particular law working in your experience you know character um character runs a gambit it's got several different you know aspects really to, to character who what, who is who are you you know what makes you, you up as a as an individual um you know courage to do the right thing your diligence honesty um being modest being humble uh have a showing gratitude being uh, showing loyalty all these things make up who you are uh you know who your character is but it doesn't only make up who what your character is it defines your organizational character if you've got that culture in place and these are the your guiding principles that's part of that organizational character we had 100 percent retention from 2006 to 2019 um uh, you know 52 different uh, hospitals that we serviced um and you know that was phenomenal it was a phenomenal run it was it was something that nobody else in our organization was able to accomplish but it was because they trusted us they trusted who we are as an organization. They trusted every everybody there that we were going to be able to get those things done for them. And not only that, we were thankful for their business, showing gratitude, showing uh, showing uh, humility, um, and being loyal to your customers. Uh, not only having your customers being loyal to you, but being loyal to them. All that defines character. Uh, you know organizational character, not just uh, individual character, but, you know, it's just like John says, when you leave a legacy, what are people going to say about your company? What are people going to say about you, the products and services that you you had for them as, as a company? What kind of character did your company have? That's good. That's great stuff. I love the stuff about humility. One of the things when I, when I have worked with a lot of coaches over the years, and there's certain uh, traits you might say that I look for in a coach. Uh, it's consistency. It is humility, as you mentioned here. Also honesty. There's other ones as well, being conscientious and diligent, being somebody who's willing to work hard. All these kind of come together, though, in this, this, this nexus, you might say, of that person being trustable, trustworthy. That's what I'm really looking for. Are you trustworthy? And it's important for our clients to be able to trust us. They've got to be able to trust us. Otherwise, if they smell a rat, like we were talking about a few minutes ago, John, they smell that, they're not, they're gonna shut down, walk away, and they just cannot engage because they know something's wrong inside. Conversely, we wanna make sure that we're working with people that we can trust. So tell us a little bit more about this idea of trust, trustworthiness in terms of character. Give us some more insights about that, John. Well, what I really have liked about um, learning from John Matone and the Matone Method is this whole concept of inner core, outer core. So when you look at the inner core, again, I'm gonna just tell you what John Matone has taught, you know, only you see your inner core, but but that's all the things that is your, your, your perception of yourself, your character, those two things are at the deepest part of the inner core. And then around the edges of that, you know, you have emotion, you have judgments, you have um, 
your ability to to be part of rules and regulations and so on. And so all of that bubbles up from your inner core and it creates what your outer core is. So um, the outer core is what the world actually sees. Um, I'd like to use the example in our in our uh, workshops or just one-on-one -on -one coaching that, you know, if if you lack trust and if you lack character, the fabric of the entire team is going to come apart. My example, I, I love Band of Brothers, okay? So I started at Fort Campbell, Kentucky, and, and that battalion still exists there. But when you go back to the miniseries, you know, the captain, the company commander, um, led them through all the training, um, was a very good trainer, but they didn't trust him. Um, they didn't trust him in the execution of his duties, uh, and they didn't trust him in interpersonal relationships. So just before they're ready to jump into Normandy the night before D-Day, the entire non-commissioned officer corps of, of that battalion, they revolted. And they said, they, they told the regimental commander, do what you want, but we're not going to combat with that guy. And, and he got exchanged. And, and there's another catastrophic moment. But in terms of leadership, the regimental commander did the very hard thing, but he did the right thing. He removed that one particular person and he raised up or promoted those key leaders already there that the others looked up to and respected. And he put them in those key leadership positions. And I would submit that the rest is history. Wow. That's one of my favorite parts of that show, by the way. <laughs> yes. It's, it's a great part. Yeah. Rich, you mentioned humility as a trait that you really admire in leaders. What are a couple more that uh, that you think are, are vital, imperative? You know, courage. Courage to do the right thing. Um, you know, doing the right thing nowadays is, is, is difficult. You know, character is who you are when one is looking. And I read that out of John Montone's book, but I, I've heard that so many different times. You know, it's who you are when nobody else is looking. And maybe it's who you are when you're the only one standing up for what's right. I, sh I should maybe even add that in. Um, courage is, is one of those things that is is imperative. It's, it's difficult. Courage against fear. Courage against, you know, failure. Courage against you know, anything out there. The business world, in, uh, is, it's a scary place. And so courage is one of those things. Um, diligence. You got to be diligent. You got to be. You got to put that. You know, one foot in front of the other. You really do. You got to keep going um, and and keep working towards your that goal. And sometimes that goal, you know, you've got to you got to shift gears and maybe go a different avenue to get to that goal. But it's it's one of those things. You know, you see this all the time. You know, and I've talked about this before. The first year, everybody makes these big goals, but by Q, end of Q1, you know, they've gone by the wayside because. They didn't have either the courage or the ability to actualize those goals. And, you know, it takes courage. It really does. Um, what about you, Michael? What, what do you see? You know, I again, I, I see this thing of consistency, of honesty and humility. And again, leading to that whole sense of trustability. I think these are, these are key things. And courage is certainly one of those. Uh, courage is not something that comes easily. I would say no. this. There's, I, you, I don't know, John, it'd be interesting to get your take on this. I think there are people that are brave, meaning they just jump into it. And there's, I'm just going to go do this. I'm not altogether sure why, but I'm, I'm, I'm brave and I'm committed, so I'm going to do this. I think there's another kind of thing that courage is a little bit different. I think courage is a little bit more thoughtful, a little bit more deep in terms of just the clarity of what it's all about and then gaining that sense of strong conviction and commitment. And then bringing that to the table and saying, this is why I'm doing what it is I'm doing. That's a deep kind of a dive. A lot of people don't want to do that deep dive on, on courage. But if you do that, it puts you in a position to do all sorts of very hard or difficult things, taking the hard right way rather than the easy wrong way is what you're talking about here. I think I think there's um, that's a real important thing for people to learn how to do the deep dive to get to the courage. Because without that, it's, you can just be a little... You know, a snowflake in the wind. Sorry to say, put it that way. Let's I got to add this about courage. I got, I got to add this real quick about courage. I hate to butt in there, but, yeah. you know, some of the things I found in my life is about courage. The hardest thing about doing something is just starting. Having the courage to start. You know, like it's just like going to school or anything else. Sometimes the hardest part is the, the courage just to go do it. 
Once you get going, it's easy. It becomes clearer. <laughs> Michael, yeah. my favorite my favorite quote comes from Samuel Clements, and it, it says, "Courage is not the absence of fear or the lack of fear. Courage is the mastery of fear." And I agree with both of you. You know, sometimes you have to be introspective. You have to think this through before you take that step. And I agree with Rich. It has to be something that you demonstrate to show you're not afraid to make a decision. And I think we agree. Leadership, you know, can be a heavy burden. And it's not for everybody, but um, no. your character will define that. And if you've got that solid, upstanding character, I think you can weather most of the storms, even when you know fear happens to appear on the distant horizon. Yeah, I agree with that. There is, there is, um, in all honesty, within all people, and it probably is evidenced more uh, in leaders, genuine, real, caring leaders. The internal debate you know, of, you know, fear and courage, it, what's in it for me versus, you know, how can I help other people? That is a real battle that takes place. And that's where a lot of that sense of heaviness comes in uh, for the for that inner battle, figuring that out. But I think once the, you know, what I give the hope to, the hope to is as leaders go through those debates and they get on top of those things and get clear about their values and their character, all of a sudden it becomes a whole lot more light at the top of that tunnel makes a whole lot more sense making those decisions that you have to make you know you know can we do it we will we can do it and we must do it all of a sudden it becomes a whole lot easier and, and it's not so much a burden as i really think it is a joy because of what you bring in terms of your love and the service that you're providing to so many people all right great discussion here today guys thanks so much so i'm gonna have i'm gonna come put it in you put it in your hands here john if you were to give us a 60 second inspirational speech about character and what it's all about and this is going to be like you know you've got a great you, I, I tell you john this is great about you you've got a great resume pedigree legacy and on top of that you got a great heart so just give this to us about what what is that all about if you had 60 seconds to lay it down what would you say i think the most moving observation michael i've ever had was when general norman schwarzkopf gave his last address to the corps of cadets prior to his retirement. And the speech was entitled Character and Competence. And he went into it in, in detail. And he said, if you don't have character, um, kind of as I have alluded to earlier, you're going to fail either spectacularly or, or over time because you're expected to be a leader that possesses character. On the other hand, you have to have competence. I mean, you can be a wonderful ethical person, you know, ethics beyond remorse, but if you don't know what you're doing, um, well, specifically in the military, people may get hurt or ultimately may, may get killed. And he said that the, the leaders of the 21st century need to have the combination of character and competence. And they were intertwined and indispensable. Yeah, that's great stuff. Great stuff. John, thank you for being here today. Yeah, Somebody thanks. wants to get a hold of you, have that critical conversation. Do I need coaching? What kind of executive coaching do you provide? What can you do? What can we work out as a partnership here? How do they do it? We do kinds of all, all kinds of things, Michael, because again, we're, we're pretty new here. So um, we like to think of ourselves as leadership coaches first and foremost, because leadership is, is applicable to everybody at every season of life and, and no matter what occupation that that you're in. And then we can take those up to some higher levels. Um, I love the Matone method because you have several tools that you're able to use. The Matone Leadership uh, Enneagram Index, in and out Processing Template, California Psychological Index 260, and, and all of those things blend together. We can share a lot of those assessments. And the one thing I'm committed to is lifetime learning. If I can learn something from somebody else and not have to go through the excessive brain power to try to figure out on my own, I'm more than happy to learn from my peers. You know, I think you you are that guy that will bring it to those people that are looking for that kind of assistance, that kind of wisdom, that kind of motivation. John, it's been a pleasure to have you on today. Thank you so much. John, well, thank you both. We'll ask you again. So, Rich, you wrap it up. You take it home for us today. All righty. Well, everybody, once again, thank you. It's been a wonderful uh, opportunity to, to talk with you some leadership uh character leadership uh traits uh if you got anything that you want to hear in a future podcast or want to get a hold of us 
mainlineleadersact at gmail.com. That's mainlineleadersact at gmail.com or richbaron.intelligentleadershipec.com. And don't forget to subscribe. And once again, I uh, appreciate you and thank you and take care. All the best, everybody. So once again, thank you for joining us today. If you have a topic you'd like to hear about on a future podcast or have suggestions or comments or a question, send us an email at mainlineleadersact at gmail.com. That's mainlineleadersact at gmail.com. Or go to richbaron.intelligentleadershipec.com. Once again, we hope to hear from you soon. Thank you and take care.